<laughs> the question you ask yourself is, what wedges do I need? Well, well, that's going to depend on your game. Here's how I would recommend you pick your wedges. Let's go with your set. What does your set go down to? Probably down to a pitching wedge, right? So first thing you want to do is go on the internet, check the iron name and model loft. Check the loft chart. On that chart, it's going to tell you the pitching wedge, how many degrees it is. Now, you have this degree. Let's say it's a 46 degree, 45 degree pitching wedge. You want to know what wedges to have thereafter. What you really need is you need a wedge, like a pitching wedge, to go a certain distance on a full shot. And then you need a club to chip it onto the green so it lands and rolls out. Is that your pitching wedge? If it is, you've killed two birds with one stone. But then we need a club to get out of the sand. I would highly recommend if you are a beginner golfer, you're having trouble in the sand. Cleveland Smart Sole S Wedge. This is a 58 degree wedge. The thing that's unique about it, it's got this huge pocket behind it like this. And that's a big cavity back. What this is designed to do is purely get out of sand and to help you chip in the rough so you don't chunk it and you don't get caught you know, trying to do fancy things. Because of the way it's set up, you can't do fancy things. You can only keep it very square and just in the bunker use your wrists and chipping use a good technique from the deep stuff. Very good club for you if you're looking for a purely sand club because you're having trouble out the sand. If you don't want one of those but you want something to get you out of the sand, get yourself a 56 degree player. I don't really mind. If you want a bladed one like this, if you want a cavity back one because you play cavity backs it's up to you but I would recommend sticking with number one the brand of clubs you're playing use their wedges the type of club you're playing use that type so if you're using cavity back irons use a cavity back wedge if you're using bladed irons use a bladed wedge just to keep that consistent feel and probably distance dispersion in terms of gaps from one club to the next so let's say you have your pitching wedge and you're happy with your pitching wedge. This club is to get you out of sand and it's to help you hit a lofted shot over stuff. You don't have to play with it. You can if you want to play with the play with this for chipping shots but you can keep it basically square and that 56 degrees designed to get the ball higher up anyway. You hit a good chip, you're hitting lofted shots over things onto the green and then you want to know how far this goes on a full shot. The amount of bounce you're going to need, you see this club, I hope you can see that. This club has got 11 degrees of bounce. Why would we use 11 degrees? 11 degrees is for a bit more firmer conditions, um, kind of firm to medium. 14 degrees is for very soft conditions, so your, your turf is very, very fluffy, very soggy, very light. Your sand is very fluffy. When it comes to lower, you can even go down to like 8 degrees on one of these things. If you're playing off harder pan, if you're playing off wet, tightly, tightly bound turf, if you're playing off sand that's much firmer or wet all the time, you can go down in bounce. So you want a wedge that suits your condition in terms of bounce. Once you get better at that, so you've got your pitching wedge, you know the distance it goes, you can chip with it. Chip and runs, beautiful. You've got your sand wedge, your 56 degree. It gets out of the sand beautifully. You've got the right bounce. It's great to chip with over things. It's not your general chipping club, just when you have to use it. And out the sand, you start to find, okay, my pitching wedge goes 125. My sand wedge goes 95. I have a 30 yard gap. How do I fix this gap? You can either stick with your pitching wedge and sand wedge. So you only need two. But if you need to plug a gap, I highly recommend knowing that uh, pitching wedge loft, knowing your sand wedge loft, and then starting in between there with the same brand of wedge that you have in your bag already. So if you have a 56 degree from Cleveland, if you have a 56 degree from TaylorMade, you want to go back and fix that gap between pitching wedge and sand wedge with the same brand and the same style. So if it's a cavity back iron, cavity back wedge, blade iron, blade wedge. You can mix and match. It's up to you. I'm not saying it's a rule, but start there. Now this one is a gap wedge that fixes that gap. It's a 52 degree and this one only has, if you can see there, hopefully eight degrees of bounce. So because it's a longer club, it doesn't need as much bounce. Now that one, you're going to be able to plug that gap on longer approaches. You'll find for chipping, this 52 degree can come in handy as you start to advance in chipping too, where you have multiple clubs that you can chip with because you pick the same landing spot to land the ball on with a different trajectory due to the loft. Now that can help to plug that gap, but you want to be 
less concerned about the degrees unless it's the same brand. If it's a different brand, you have to be less concerned with the degrees and more concerned with the actual distance you're hitting it because the gap wedge is to plug a gap first and foremost. So you want to know from, a, from 95 to 125 yards, 30 yards, if you hit that with the same swing that goes 95 with a sand wedge or 125 with a pitching wedge, if it goes not 52 degrees, same swing speed, is that going to plug that gap which you need to be 110 yards? Can you hit that shot? 112, 108, 115, whatever it is, are you happy with that gapping? Because if you're happy with that gapping, you win. But if you're just going with degrees, because what the real thing would be if you have a pitching wedge 46 and the next one is a 56 degree, this A wedge, approach wedge, also another word for gap wedge, this one is the Srixon Z785. This matches my Srixon set. I have a set of Z forged, which is pretty similar to the Z785 clubs. So this is a 51 degree, also with eight degrees of bounce. So because it's the same manufacturer, I worried more about the degrees. When it comes to other manufacturers, so I'll play Z-forged irons, but then I'll go and get myself a couple Cleveland wedges, and I'll play these 50 and 54 degree wedge, which do not match my set, but they match the distance I feel like hitting nowadays. So it can change. You may be like me and have all these wedges and then some days you start to see, man, I keep leaving myself 118 yards. That club goes 125, but I know this one is the 118, 120 yard club. So therefore I need to adjust the other one as well and, you know, use a couple of options. Now, the reason I bring up the 58 degree from Eric Chong, once you go Chong, you never go wrong, Impact Golf Malaysia, is that these two clubs are the bane of people's existence. Why do I say that? I say that because you do not need these clubs. Let me say that again. You do not need a lob wedge. 56 degree will be best for almost all golfers. Anybody can get to a scratch handicap with a 56 degree. The reason we play the 58 and the 60 degree is because we think we need something like the pros. We have space in the bag. We want to make 14 clubs. Do you need a 58 or 60 degree? No. Do you play tight conditions and you need the loft, you need a low bounce like this that's been shaven down potentially to get around, up and down around the greens a bit easier in a competition, you're a low handicap? Yes, it all depends on you. But don't go splurging on these clubs just because the pros play them. These are very difficult wedges to hit. The 58 and the 60 are very difficult. Why do I say it's difficult? Well, the 56s are designed for sand. So they've been designed to make it really easy with a big, big fat sole, a nice sense of gravity, help you to chip that ball up real easy. Good technique, you're going to do well. The pitching wedge, the, the nine iron for chipping, it's that very, very big margin for error where you can miss strike it a little bit, it's still going to go great. You do that wrong, the, the same poor strike, on a, 50, on a 58 or 60 degree wedge, the same poor strike all over the face here, you just, it's not gonna work. Like it just doesn't work. The spin rate will change, the flight will change, the carry will change. You cannot predict what's gonna happen with these clubs, the 60 and the 58 degree, unless you're hitting the sweet spot and you're really practiced with great technique with them, they're gonna really hurt you. And a lot of the time, this is a wasted spot in the bag that you can just leave empty and improvise with your 56 degree. I promise, you do not need these. If you want them, that you can get them, no problem. But just be brutally honest with yourself. Is it helping you? Or are you chunking? Are you blading? Is it, is it difficult? If it is, hey, there's no shame in leaving it behind. And even deciding to go 56, 54, 52, 50 degree, 48 degree, if you'd like. There's no shame in it. But remember, the only two you really need are a pitching wedge for chipping and a sand wedge for approaches of a certain distance from the sand as well, green side, and lofting chips over things just to get it on the green. Two are needed. The rest you can plug in as you want or as you need using what I've just told you. Have a good life.